You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk, or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 687. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty Health Share is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty Health Share and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, Think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. At St. Jude, a family never sees a bill at all. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. 
It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. Tell you something. I am so sick of Washington and all its works and all them politicians down there and them congressmen and the congress. I'll bet you won't find none of them congressmen signing down their electric blankets tonight. Which if they did, their secretaries would get up and go home. We gotta do something. Absolutely. You know what we gotta do? Boga party. Boga! 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 I want you to kill every golfer on the course. Check me if I'm wrong, Sandy, but if I kill all the golfers, they're going to lock me up and throw away the key. Well, all right, all right, all right. It's Friday night, which means it's time for Robinson and Wright. I am one half of the crew, Mr. Rick Robinson. The other half of the crew, Mr. Dan Wright, is here with us. And we actually have a special guest with us this evening. That's right. We have sprung him from the donkey farm. Shh, don't tell Foo. She doesn't know. Uh, the opulent Amish is joining us for the show tonight. So good evening, gentlemen. How are both of you doing? I'm great. I'm doing fantastic, Rick. How are you guys doing tonight? So I uh, just want to make sure you did get that toga I sent you in the mail, right? Yeah. I, <laughs> that sure. was optional, though, right? Because I, it's I see I feel a little overdressed. Well, that's why I sent you the toga. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, so toga. Anyway. Toga is mandatory for the Friday night show, by the way. Okay. Well, then I will go put it on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks uh, for having me, though. This is awesome. You are welcome. It's been something we've been talking about doing for a long time and just never have been able to figure out a time to get it done. And so I was like, screw it. We're going to do it. Then you're like, I can't do it this week because I went to the dentist. I'm like, how about next week? You're like, okay, cool. So, yeah, here we are. So, yeah. And couldn't pick a better time to be on the show because it's not like there's not nine bazillion things to talk about. Why does it always seem like I'm on a show after a shooting? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. I mean, before we went on hiatus, Sam and I's last show was right after Vegas, and then we came back right after. Uh, oh God, was it was it Arizona, Texas, and you know, they're they're coming hard and fast now. That's what she said. Yeah, they they are, and and I, you and I actually touched on it a little bit today. I really would like to see a little bit more downplaying on the guys that do these shootings well yeah we were talking about that today and i as i've evolved as the conversations have evolved over the last couple days you know they keep saying well how come every other country in the world doesn't have this problem every other country in the world doesn't make them famous for a week blasting their name talking to all of their relatives and you know getting into the minutiae of their lives it's when you say everybody's going to be famous for 15 minutes and then they see no way in their life to be famous other than shooting up a school, here you have it. You know, that's, I, I think it plays a major factor in, it in the 24 seven news cycle. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just the, the, the day this happened and the end of the day after I have a friend of mine here in North Carolina and some girl in her daughter's school was online talking about how, you know, She's going to go in and light up the school and this and that and the other thing. And nobody was doing anything about it. Yeah, It's like, really? I mean. Her dirt you know, was just trolling. Yeah. And it's, but it's like, but, but she's been in trouble for stuff like this before. 
And she's doing it again. And my friend's like, I'm not sending my daughter to school tomorrow. Because this chick is posting this stuff all over the place, and nobody's doing anything about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want us to become like England where we arrest people for being mean on the internet. But on the other hand, you know, a knock on the door from the cops probably wouldn't be a bad idea from time to time. <laughs> I mean, it's just... But, no, I mean, I, if someone's being just mean to somebody, someone's being mean to somebody. But if someone's basically on there saying they're ready to go in there and light up their school when this stuff's going on, I think that warrants a visit from the police. Especially when you know they're so prone to copycatting. You know, it's it, it it's like. It's like with the scary clown thing every few Octobers where every few Halloweens where the scary clowns are everywhere and they're all copycatting each other and then it dies down for a while and then they come then they all start doing it again and it's I mean kids are gonna do that I just I don't, yeah I don't I don't have a good solution to it I don't think any of us do but you know like I said maybe a knock on the door from the cops from time to time would Shut them up. <laughs> so I, yeah, do, and, I, I do have yeah, one. Yeah, under the about that scary clown thing, I do live in a castle off state. So don't show up in my front yard as scary clowns. <laughs> I'm not going to shoot you. I'm not going to shoot you. But you're going to get spotlighted by a nice 870 and you're going to be on the ground. So about, <laughs> about, the yeah. other, about the other countries don't have this problem kind of thing, though, because I found some interesting data that seems to contradict that when you look at it as kind of a per capita thing where you're taking into account total populations of the different countries. If you break it down population-wise, in most of the things that we're talking about, we don't even break top 10. Yeah, I, I saw you tweet out that um – article i don't know if it was national review or where you got it from but i i retweeted that i saw that and yeah i mean per capita we're not in the top 10 and also you look at countries i, I saw a great meme i just don't use it because i'm not 100 percent sure of its accuracy but switzerland and honduras both have 8.5 million li people living in switzerland I, almost everybody is armed this doesn't happen honduras is you're not allowed to own a weapon. You're not allowed to own a gun. Highest murder rate in the world. So yes, I've seen I've seen that meme, and like you, I'm not positive how accurate it is, but I'm sure that it's somewhat accurate. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just. I mean, you could argue argue socioeconomic, you know, pressures, you know, where one has one, one doesn't, and everything like that, but. And that's just it. It's more than just guns. There are more factors than just guns. Look at Chicago. I mean, that's all handguns in Chicago. It's not, you know, AR-15s. It's not AK-47s. It's just that there's a lot of factors. And the left always wants to make it about the guns. Well, and it always comes down to what, 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 <laughs> whose stats they want to use. This, this, organization over there over here says that a mass shooting is two or more this organization over here says a mass shooting is four or more but if you look at either one of them the majority of those mass shootings are still done with handguns but if i put if i tell somebody that the majority of mass shootings are done with handguns they say no they aren't i say well any mass shooting that's two or more is done with a handgun and then they come back and they say, no, 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 it's four or more. But it could be another situation and they'll come back and they'll say, oh, well, no, every, any mass shooting is two or more. So it's like, pick your stats. You know, I've had the same people tell me both depending on which way it went in their favor. And I just used the two or more. You know, this was kind of like a conversation we were having before we went on air and that you, the way that people get their information now it's not you know the news they want it's the facts they want i saw i i can't remember exactly who it was tweeting out yesterday that it's illegal for the for the cdc to compose gun crime or yeah gun crime statistics 
And I thought about that for a second, and then I researched it, and yes, there was a law passed in 96, but it was a law saying that they could not use it for a political agenda. And then in 2012, Obama commissioned the CDC to do just that, and they returned with completely counter to Obama's narrative. And that's why nobody knows about it, because if it had come out the other way, if it had come out saying that, yo, yeah, you know, it's an epidemic and – you know, this we should use this for gun confiscation and everything. You know, it would have been touted as a personal achievement of his, but because it came back saying, "No, good guys with guns stop a lot of crimes," then it didn't. It didn't get reported. No, and and you, if you if you are ever on the gun sense hashtag, the anti gun sense people, which is pretty much us, oh, they all have that, and. And the the argument they get is, no, that's got to be fake because that's illegal. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Hey, and uh, Liberty just told us in the chat too that Honduras has the world's highest murder rate, according to the United Nations report released on Thursday. There were ninety point four homicides per one hundred thousand people in two thousand twelve. That's so a that's, lot. That's a lot. I mean, you know, this is what I, I keep saying. There's 100 million gun owners with 300 million guns in the United States. If guns were a problem, you'd know it. That's what I yeah, was sure. saying. And I, 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 saw, I saw something the other day that said that there's approximately 5 million AR-15s in the United States. Yeah. It's and I don't have one. This makes me sad. I need to get one. And. And, you know, that's what <laughs> I've been, all day I've been talking about my friend up in Canada that I helped get a permit to, you know, showed him the you know steps and what you need to know to get a gun and, you know, to become a licensed gun over, owner up in Canada. And he's got the Mini 14, but he's got the Chinese and Orinco version of it. And the thing right now looks every bit like an AR-15, and he says it's awesome as hell. <laughs> so, you know, Canada. <laughs> Still. Well, and that's a that's a thing too what everybody argues and, and, and I saw you use it today and I use it all the time is the mini 14 comparison where you take a rancher and you put it next to a decked out mini 14 Yeah. personally personally, I used to have one I don't anymore personally I want another rancher the rancher is yeah. awesome well it's like I you know, it. I've got an old Ruger 1022 and that's my favorite gun to shoot still I mean, it's and you can make that thing into the zombie killer. You can make it look like a P90. You can make it look like any number of things with a couple modifications. And that's the point that you know we try to make is there's no such thing as an assault weapon. And it's you can take like you said the rancher and you can turn it into a full. We'll just do the air the scare quote military grade weapon that they like to use with just some modifications and some blackout paint. Exactly. I mean, I have honestly. Probably one of the most accurate firearms I have, and it's a semi-automatic, is my Marlin 60. Now, it's tube feed, so I can't just dump a magazine, but I still got 15 shots in it. Mm -hmm. And it's semi-automatic. And at 100 yards, I can pop an eye out of a squirrel. Right. I mean, honestly, if... If the shit hit the fan, sorry, I did it this time, Rick. <laughs> if, it hit the this fan, if it hit the fan, I, I, that that's one of the rifles I want to have with me because I'm going to eat. Yeah, I, I've got a 20 gauge Remington, the semi automatic. I can put six, and that's a lot. That's a wall of lead going up, but just as fast as I can fire any other weapon. But absolutely. Yeah. Anyway. So enough of us jerking hey. off over our guns. Hey, you, you guys are true. <laughs> well, but, but no, it, there, there's there's points to be made there. And I mean, to be honest with you, if it, if it came down to my AR and and my Savage ninety three bolt action, I'm gonna grab my Savage ninety three bolt action because I could just climb up on a freaking roof somewhere, and you're not gonna get within six hundred yards of me. Observation tower, how Texas? <laughs> exactly. I mean. It's, it's, you know, they sit there and they talk about deadly weapons. I mean, that 93 is only a 17 HMR. Well, I mean, but I'm going to, I'm going to nail, I'm going to nail anything I want to from 500 yards with the optics I have on it. <laughs> so, you know, you talk, it, it, it everything's relative. 
Well, and I mean, every anything is deadly. You know, I've been using the car argument all day. But when I was a kid, a friend of mine was accidentally shot and killed with a twenty two long rifle. They were out hunting squirrels. One of them tripped, pulled the trigger, and it just bounced around in his chest in his chest cavity for a while. And a twenty two is just as deadly as a nine mil, a forty five. You know, absolutely something entering your body can kill you the end i mean that 17 hmr it's a 17 caliber bullet yeah with a 22 magnum load behind it that goes 300 3300 feet per second anything can be used as a deadly weapon Yep. So, and it's just that it's like when we were talking to your brother today it's the narrative you know if they wanted to make it as big of a, if they wanted to make bit drunk driving a bigger deal, they would start talking about confiscating cars because if you have a cocktail, you're a potential drunk driver, and yes, the fines are severe for drunk driving, but it cars are more deadly. I don't see them advocating to pull all cars off the road. You know, well, a car isn't designed to kill. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it's, it's all relative. Yeah. I mean, you know. <laughs> And, you know, there's some terrorists in Paris who would like to, you know, argue that point with you twice. They've done it with a rented truck. So, I yeah, I mean, uh, 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 a, a, a deuce and a quarter truck going through freaking Times Square is going to be a problem. Well, I mean, well, I, going back yeah. to the AR-15 being modified argument, a rider truck with some modifications that became a bomb in my home city. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I brought I, that up today. I brought right. that up today, and and what I get back, well, they're 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 monitoring fertilizer sales now. Yeah, ammonia nitrate sales is monitored. Right. Well, you know, so. <laughs> Diesel fuel so, isn't. Do, do, do they do they do they monitor somebody pulling into a a, a southern states and just stealing it? Yeah, I. No, right, might, I mean, it's but it's just piled up on the side of the road in some places. Right, but, but here's yeah. the thing: the, the people are being monitored. The FBI knew about this guy, and they did nothing. So I mean, it's not like we can't say the monitoring is isn't working. It's not it's not <coughs> effective because it's not being used. But the monitoring exists because this guy used his own name on social media and said that he wanted to be a professional school shooter, and that was reported to the FBI. And they went, hey, hey, Russians, never mind. <coughs> yeah, well, yeah. And all of them are. You know, we were talking about that today too, Dan. Where you know you had the dude in Arizona was known by the FBI. The Pulse nice nightclub shooter was known by the FBI. San Bernardino, known by the FBI. The guy in Northern California, he had, there were three different ways that he was ineligible to own a gun. He still had an AR-15. And, you know, it's, well, AR-15 seemed to be the cause. Of it. Rifles only account for, what, 1,600 deaths a year in the United States as opposed to 16,000 handgun deaths. So it's just because it looks scary. That's it. And, and even to add on to what you said, the, the Charleston shoot, church shooter, he was known by the FBI, too. Yeah. The, all these guys are, are already The Zardab brothers, the Boston, the Boston bombers, they were known by the FBI. They were already flagged. And this, it's just it's a failure of, you know. You want to talk about more laws. How about if we get the laws we already have working first? You know, you're supposed to have these background checks, but the system is so backlogged or garbage or whatever that it's not working. So obviously that's your problem right there. The problem is the bureaucracy on that level. Whether you want to call it the FBI, BATF, or any, you know, well, I mean, any of the alphabet soup agencies. Honestly, to, to take things just a step further, I actually had a guest on for the first half of America Off the Rails, uh, Mike Velardia, who was a uh, retired federal agent who was actually part of a Joint Terrorism Task Force and actually did most of the things that, uh, that 
you know, we're talking about tonight about, you know, being part of, you know, hunting down people and this, that, and the other. He said one of the things that he noticed, which was the biggest change, was a lot of the changes in policy that the Obama administration had transitioned in after uh, the Bush administration left. And he said that's what's created a lot of the ineffectualness within the FBI and the other intelligence agencies is these policies that have basically hamstringed them. He said, you know, one of the things that we always used to do, and it's a bad thing now, was profiling, you know, because because as a, as a police officer, law enforcement officer, federal agent, you get used to following your instincts. And a part of that is profiling. So that was one of the things that was taken away from them. So that's one of the things where now when they get tips and they get this, that, and the other, it has to go through like 14 different filters to even get to somebody before they can finally do something about it. And it's getting lost in the translation. All because of the BS extra bureaucracies that the Obama administration put in place. And he actually talked well, about that a little bit tonight. That doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, when you have... The FBI and major law enforcement, you know, city municipal law enforcement agencies being told you can't use the word terrorist because it's insensitive. I mean, that goes back to you know, right around 2012. I remember everyone getting upset about that. When you can't use the language, when you have to be touchy feely, then yeah, then the filter, it's going to get stopped right at that level. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I even, you know, we can, we can go even deeper with what's going on. And I, I put a partial quote out today and I know you saw it. Um, but the, but the whole quote from Joe Rogan is that in this country, we have a mental health issue, a mental health problem being disguised as a gun problem and a tyranny problem being disguised as a security problem. Absolutely, absolutely, and it, that that's a lot of it too. It's you can't mention the mental health issue because then, at least on the right, because then you get thrown. Well, and then why are you cutting Medicaid? And you know what? If you want to take back some gun laws, I'll be more than happy to have that bureaucracy funneled over to Medicaid. If you want to take two thousand jobs from having to sit there and read background, whatever, you know all these extra layers of bureaucracy you have built up and you want to take that money, you want to put it in Medicaid. I'll, I'll listen, but you know, you, you're just using it as an excuse to throw more money at the ever present status beast. Well, yeah, I mean, it's here in, 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 in the Charlotte area we have, we, we, have, we really have, we have the two great behavioral health facilities really good i know because i work at them you know i do i do work for them but they're both essentially privately run i mean they're run by carolina health systems one of them used to be run by mecklenburg county and well owned by mecklenburg county and they had chs run it for them and they were 10 million dollars in arrears to, to CHS, and finally CHS basically said, what, what's the story? You owe us 10 million bucks. And they said, eh, we'll just give you the property. It's yours now. So that that's where we're at. I mean, as far as our tax money goes, you know, at least locally here, none of it's going to, to mental health. It's all been turned over to CHS or to to Novant, who are basically taking a loss as a write off. Well, and that's now they're great facilities. I mean, don't get me wrong; they're great facilities, and and they put a lot of money into them. And and one of them here is a, I mean, it's it's a nationally recognized facility, you know, and it, it's great. But it just kind of goes to show you that that mental health is 100% privatized. It's, you know, they're, the, the government isn't doing anything for mental health unless it's at the VA, but then it's the VA. Which you is know? garbage in itself. Right, right. Yeah, I, and, well, mental health in this country, it, you know, it's, it's really just become, here's a handful of Xanax and a suicide prevention hot number. Do what you think is best. That's <laughs> the other problem is medication. It's it's all medication now. It's lazy. It's here. We're going to count on you to make sure you take your meds so that you're stable. 
So you're feeling better. So you say, oh, I don't need to take my meds anymore because I'm feeling pretty good. And right. that, yeah. So, yeah. And that's just it. I mean, there's just no, plus the stigma of, okay, well, you can't, you know, you can't call a person crazy. It's insensitive to do this. It's insensitive to do that. And, well, again, we didn't have these problems in the 70s and 80s. I mean, when I was going to school, there was either a rifle or a shotgun in the trunk of my car because my friends and I were going shooting after school that day. And nobody batted an eye. Nobody freaked out. Cops were never called. That was just, well, you know, that was the time. That was, that was how it was. So, I mean, obviously, but I also recall, you know, that was actually before political correctness, too, where, you know, you just, we, we can't be insensitive about these things. Well, I'm sorry, you know, it's like, well, again, like we were talking about before the show and during the show is that you, you have people who are red flag warnings, but the police can't do anything about it. Social services can't do anything about it. Nobody can do anything about it until they actually do something. And by then it's too late. Right. I mean, and, 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 and back to like medication, I mean, my, my oldest son, when he was, I'd say he was about eight years old, they, a teacher, and it made me so mad, a teacher recommended that he be on Ritalin. And not only was I pissed at the teacher because she's not a psychiatrist, um, you know, we ended up in all these meetings at the school, you know, trying to figure this out. But he's just, he, he was a boy. I mean, yeah. growing up, we were all, we, all boys have attention deficit disorder. The end. I don't care. We all did. Every one of us. If you're a boy, 90, 90% of us had attention deficit disorder. I'm sorry, oh, what right. were you saying? My son, my son grew, did not go on <laughs> Ritalin, and he grew up to be just fine. And so did I. But you put all these kids on Ritalin and all these drugs, and then they get a little bit older, and they stop taking it. Now their body and their mind is used to being on this drug. What happens? Yeah, you're going through withdrawal. Now you have clinical depression. Now here's more medication. Right. And, yeah, I mean, no, you're totally right. We all had ADD. And what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, is we, we all had ADD, and, you know, it's, it's a bright spring day. We would rather be anywhere than in school, and we're thinking about that. Or a little bit older, we were thinking about the, you know, pig-headed girl – or pig-haired – pig-headed – pig-tailed girl in front of us. And <laughs> God. Damn, that was a slip. But um, you know, well, just, they are usually kind of. <laughs> never mind. But, but you know, that was, you know, yeah, we were not concentrate. We were concentrating on everything but school. And absolutely, uh, I mean, and, I was thinking and about drug for that. I was thinking about fishing or baseball or, like you said, you know, freaking making sure I was hidden under my desk because I was sitting behind the girl in front of me you know it it, it that that's just boys it's yeah. it's just the way boys are boys aren't allowed to be boys anymore unless their parents let them right and i let i let my boys be boys i didn't care what anybody oh you're you should try bridlin or you should try this no you know what so he's getting c's instead of b's I really don't care as long as he's him, and now my boys have grown up to be normal boys, mm -hmm. you know? I, I, I don't, they, they haven't been on any of these drugs. Now, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that some drugs aren't good. I mean, I, I do have a daughter that is, she's bipolar. She is. She's legitimately bipolar. But she's medicated. And she's a NICU nurse, you know, mm. she's on her meds. She's doing great. I'm not going to sit here and say that meds aren't necessarily good, but the, 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 every time some boy acts out a little bit, the, the want and need to put them on something is ridiculous. It's just, I find it completely ridiculous. And I think it's part of our problem. I might be, you know, 
I might be tin hatting right here. I don't know. But I honestly think it's part of our problem. And again, like we were saying, it's a multifaceted thing. And, you know, Liberty in the chat's talking about how hard it is for LEOs to get, you know, they're, they're not there to diagnose mental problems or you know behavioral problems but it's hard for them to get a to get resources for non-criminal activity you know to say hey this person needs to be looked at and this goes with the thread i was talking in the other day where the person thought a psychiatric hey, exam would take a couple hours the music means it's time to take a break folks we'll be right back we gotta pay some bills this is robinson right friday night klr on radio.com Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, Think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Alright folks, welcome back. This is Rick Robinson. 
co-host of the Robinson and Wright Show. But for tonight, we might as well just call up the Amish and Wright Show. No, I'm just playing. Um, they were actually <laughs> giving me a hard time on the break because they're like, you're not talking. I'm like, I talk a lot. I'm letting you guys talk. So anyway, back to the show. You just never <laughs> shut up. Even on our show, I can't get you to shut up. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Guy has seven shows a week. He just can't stop talking. So, yeah, before the break, I think we were talking about um, how LEOs have a hard time getting, you know, mental health support, getting psychiatric support. And I was in this thread. This guy actually wanted to, based off of an accusation that somebody can be lose their gun rights and have their Fifth and Sixth Amendment rights suspended while they're incarcerated pending a psychiatric evaluation. And their whole attitude, and this is, I see this a lot. You know, with people on the left, is that well, a psychiatric evaluation only, you know, it couldn't take more than a couple of days. It takes months. They're thinking of phrenology where the guy just comes and feels the bumps on their head and says, oh, yeah, this person's crazy. <laughs> that's, that's not how psychiatry works. And, but they think, well, let's just suspend everybody's rights until, you know, uh, it, it's. But yes, we do have a mental health problem and we are over medicated. Well, it, yeah, I mean, to touch on that point, too, I mean, I saw something yesterday that said, well, you know, there was a bill to for for, you know, basically mental health health eval and keeping guns away from from the mentally ill and and and, you know, Trump dismissed it. Well, yeah, because that bill included Anybody with PTSD. We well, yeah, the ACLU which, was which, against which, that bill. Right, which which anybody with PTSD includes probably a third, maybe a third of the police officers out there and how much of the military. Are you really going to tell a guy that goes over and sits in a desert with with a fully automatic weapon or, uh, you know, a 50 cal and pops people off for us. When he comes back here, you're going to tell him that he can't have a hang handgun to protect his family because he has a few issues with the fact that he's been over in a desert killing people for six months. Right. Or like with same with law enforcement or corrections officials. And right. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. It's, it's all part of disarming the population. And you know, they point to Australia. Well, Australia did a buyback, and they only had twenty eight percent compliance in Australia. You know, and so that made everybody else a felon, and they didn't care. <laughs> it's, it, they, but they didn't go around taking them away well, from them either. It's like, okay, well, let, you know, let's not forget that Australia was once a prison colony. I don't think they really care about being felons. I'm just saying. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, to touch on that, I mean. I'll be honest with you, you know, our little conversation today, obviously he's my brother. It went off of Twitter timeline mm -hmm. and we were talking back and forth and he brought Australia up and some other countries. And he, he basically said, you know, if the trend keeps going this way and my brother is a smart guy and he used to actually work in politics when he was actually a conservative, which he used to be. And, and he, this stuff really interests him. And he was like, you know, I'm just being honest here and it's just my gut feeling, but if things keep going this way, I really see some sort of confiscation coming down the line. And I told him, I said, well, there's no registration in my state, so they don't know what I have and they're not going to take my property. And he kind of said something along the lines of, well, you know, that's your prerogative. And I said, well, yeah, it is my prerogative. I said, I'll be a criminal because you're not going to take my stuff. You don't know I have it. It's going to be here. To me, it's worth it. If I protect my family and I keep my family from getting killed or myself or whatever, and I end up doing a five-year jail sentence... It's worth it for me if I saved my family. I'll be a criminal. You know, I there was this, talking about what you know your brother was saying with the zeitgeist moving the other direction. Uh, there was a study recently taken of um, police chiefs and sheriffs nationwide, 
and 80% responded that they would not comply with an order to confiscate weapons from their citizens. And so it's the come and take it thing, you know, everyone's like, well, we'll, we'll just come and take it. Well, you're, you're going to have to do it yourself because the cops aren't going to do it. Yeah, I mean, Katrina, they were under orders from FEMA, if I remember right. And after Katrina, there was a bill passed that Bush signed that no law enforcement officer operating under the colors of the federal government is allowed to confiscate a weapon from a citizen who's legally allowed to own one. So, well, yeah, I, I know that the state of Wyoming has a standing order with the state police that if any kind of confiscation order came down federally, that the state police are supposed to resist the feds. So, I mean, the they're coming to take our. They're not going to come and take our. They can't come and take our guns. No. And you know the army's not going to do it. The sheriffs aren't going to do it. The cops aren't going to do it. So it's basically just a wet dream of the left of a gun-free world. And even then, you know, we still have the same argument over and over again: is that good thing cocaine's illegal and nobody can get it anywhere because you know it was outlawed and it's regulated and you know, so you're only allowed to get it as a pharmaceutical. I or mean, heroin there's, or prostitution. Yeah, or heroin you know. or yeah, anything else. You know, all these things are illegal and they're still everywhere. All you've done is just made a legal gun owner a criminal. If anything, yeah, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> you know, I, I hate to bring this up because it's it, it's something that people yell at me for all the time. I dare say that when we prohibit things, we make them more desirable. So well, that's no, you're well, look at right. look at prohibition. Look at prohibition. I mean, the the biggest party era of this country was the twenties. <laughs> because yeah. it became it became glamorous. The speakeasies and everything else. The best clubs this country ever had were the speakeasies. Oh yeah, and that's actually where jazz came from and everything. Yeah, so it it's the same thing with a hundred years of marijuana um, prohibition. It's the whole thing was ginned up on yellow journalism from w- w- William Randolph Hearst, and it's become this, you know, like you said, it's the subculture, cool kids are doing it kind of thing. It was never a problem or an issue before, you know, it was just there. And now it's, you know, it's hip to smoke pot, and you got dispensaries everywhere, and hip. I just said hip. Jesus Christ. Kids get off my lawn, <laughs> but you know it just could have been worse. You didn't you're right, say you're hip. Right. We, we, once you make something illegal, you make it sexy. It could have been worse. You didn't say hip. You're just saying hip. <laughs> I, I didn't say BBC either. But so but you know, I, I, it's no. Go ahead, Rick. No, I, actually, I was just gonna uh, bust out with a joke I just saw on my TL. So finish your thought real quick. No, I, it just. The whole this, – this whole thing, I mean, I, I read an article today that was posted <clears throat> early in the same thread you were in and talking about in, in, in England, this, this family in England, they legally owned a gun, legally owned a gun. They live out in the country in the middle of nowhere, and they get home invaded. By like six guys. So this guy protects his family by shooting two of these guys, not killing them, but shooting them with the, the family shotgun. Guess who goes to jail? The shooter. He, the shooter for protecting his family. Yeah. He, is now, he is now facing like five years in prison for using a firearm to protect himself. If he had protected himself with a knife or a baseball bat, everything would have been fine. But since he used a firearm, which they legally owned, he's facing like five years in prison. That country is permanently screwed up. Yeah, so, but that's 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 what that's what the left wants here. So they want on, everybody to be victims because then you can create more laws. Well, yeah, because right. the, well, the, the left, the left loves loves victims. That's how they get votes. But so all I'm going to say about this whole, you know, guy going to jail for using a gun, I used to quote this a lot when I spent my nights in uniform. 
better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6. Just saying. Especially if I'm actually saving the life of somebody else. Um, but since we are just about out of time, I'm going to start trying to lighten things up a bit. I have to give a uh, shout out to Rotten Scoundrel. Uh, so he has a question. What's the difference between the FBI and a doctor performing a, a circumcision? Oh, God, circumcision Twitter. <laughs> what is it? The FBI doesn't know what to do with tips. <laughs> <laughs> God, did you see my timeline with foreskin Twitter for a week last week? Yes. Why do you well, think I, I brought it up? I jumped in a couple times there. Oh, God, that was so bad. I don't ever want to get involved with foreskin Twitter again. It was worse than Vagina Gate. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know vaginoplasty was a thing, but after a week of having, uh, just God, they, they're worse than flat earthers. Well, they I really noticed are. it. I noticed it because I noticed a, I, I believe it was, I noticed a tweet from Sam addressing you and saying, are you still talking foreskins? It's the weirdest Twitter. It is. Just, <laughs> and yeah, that's, everybody gives me a hard time because I happen to bring up the, uh, the dregs of Twitter, but this one I had no responsibility with. This came from two other people that were arguing with MRAs, and then it just got out of control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's, I, I don't ever want to engage that again. <laughs> yes, I'm the one that jumped in with the anteater tweet. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man. So, <laughs> there we have that. Well, yeah, there, there was a thanks there was, to Bob. Thanks there, to Bob because that was actually a pretty good joke. Yeah, that was a good that. one. I there was a that. reason I brought that up was because of that whole circumcision thing going on in your TL for like a week. <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah, I you, you know who you are. It was you are entirely to blame for that, and me bringing it to the surface for everyone else to have to experience too. So <laughs> I know you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> So. It was it was killing me. I went through that timeline, and I was like, "You've got to be kidding me!" Well, it was bad. Was it? it finally started to die down, and that's when Sam quote tweeted me, "Say you have the weirdest Twitter feed." <laughs> <laughs> and then I was, there's fifty people, no, <laughs> fifty people. Oh, what's going on in Roadbeer's feed? And boom. <laughs> 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 uh. Yeah, that Twitter's happens a weird to, place. And that, that happens to me too. I mean, you get into that wacky feed that all of a sudden goes on for like six days, and you're like, you know who I haven't seen since you, the election? You, you, Flat Earthers. Well, Remember how they were everywhere? It was I had like, one. I had one a couple months ago, wait, and wait. and unfortunately, I was kind of on her side, not realizing she was one. And then somebody else came in and went, oh, look, she's a flat earther. And I looked at her bio and I was like, I mean, she was getting ragged hard. And I was like, oh, God, I'm defending a flat earther now. Yeah, but remember, it would be all the legitimate, the, the poor English speaking, poor grasp of American politics, Trump supporters that you just knew were from Macedonia or Russia or Russian farm and then as soon as they would disappear from the argument here comes a flat earther into that thread so you knew that it was the same troll farm <laughs> <laughs> and then as soon as the flat earther would leave a pro-palestine would come in and it was all in yep. the same thread so it i missed that actually after foreskin twitter <laughs> so <laughs> well, but, through this through this last election cycle to be honest with you i mean I miss freaking hunting ISIS people. <laughs> yeah, that was a thing before. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> but now I've got the California primaries coming up soon, where we've got governor and a senator. So this the left is going to eat itself in this in the primaries. I'm going to love it. Is there is there still a chance that in some of the races you could have re two Republicans running? <clears throat> I don't think it's likely. Not on the I really don't think it's likely. Um, it'd be nice. I mean, we're always going to get our sacrificial lamb thrown up. The problem is, is that the NRA and the GOP use California as a boogeyman. Send us money, otherwise you're going to be like California. 
and they don't spend a dime back in the state. So it, we're never going to get the last chance we had was with McClintock, but Hannity pushed freaking Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I, I don't think it's going to happen. Though I did see today that they're passing that they're going to try and get a bill on the ballots to where GMOs aren't allowed in the state. Vaccinations are by um, choice. Uh, no fluoridization, no fluoride or chlorine in water. Uh, basically, well, just Alex a, Jones a clean, will be happy about clean healthy living bill. So I figure once the zombie apocalypse breaks out in California, and it only affects people who don't who eat whatever. Anyway, so it's only going to affect the left in California. Then we're going to have a hundred years of conservative rule. So. Yeah, the, that's that's the the clean healthy living bill. That as soon as the next nasty strain of nirovirus hits. You're just going to have people like you left. <laughs> Everybody's going to be out. Everybody out in the rural area is going to be all that's left. Well, it's, San Diego has a huge hepatitis problem, and this, my state's so dumb. It's just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I, I, there's nothing more I can say about it. Are I you mean, just figuring this out? No, I, no, I'm he's not. known for a while. We've talked you have about to, it. You have to externalize it every now and then. You know, you, you have to say the words to remind yourself that you're not just. I, you see Nancy Pelosi and Camilla Harris, and she was our AG for a while too. So that tells you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you see Xavier, I'm drawing a blank on, our, on his last name, that actually is our AG now. Uh, you see these people on Twitter and Ted Lieu, and you think, well, you know why California is so screwed up? <laughs> That's real. I'm sorry, I had to go on a little mini rant about that. Yeah, well, Ted, <laughs> Ted Lou's kind of scary. I, 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 you know, I've, I've, in the last few years, I've visited out there a few times, and I love it. I, I do. I love the state itself. I love it. I couldn't live there, man. I don't know how you do it. I, you know, I, re, I, I do have hope because I, I've always been kind of joking that I'd like love to get my county to secede from California and join the free state of Nevada. And I, I was talking to somebody who was talking to the county GOP party chair, and he said it's actually on the books that us and three other counties can secede from California whenever we want. So, I have that going for me, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. Is <laughs> all the all the eastern counties, uh, Inyo, Mono, Alpine, and I think Washoe, uh, when they were incorporated into the state, um, reserved their right to leave California at any time. So, hooray! <laughs> well, I mean, I, I spent I spent some time down in the Fresno area. Like on the outskirts of Fresno, basically in the country. It's really nice to get outside I, the oil derricks. Yeah, I, I loved it out there. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. And and the you know the drive the drive through the grapevine. What a great yeah. drive! Yeah. What an awesome drive! As, as soon as you get past all the windmills, right? Um, but you know, I I, I loved visiting out there i really did i mean I, I had fun out there you know there's there's so much to do and so much to see and there's so much beauty but good lord i could not live out there it's yeah i, I was really pulling for the california new california thing and then i found out that the guy who was behind that was a sandy hooker and i just realized oh Damn it! That actually had some traction. <laughs> Sandy Hook. That, that, that had, almost sounds kind of dirty. Um, it does sound kind of dirty. Gentlemen, we are just about out of time. Why don't you guys give out your social media contacts so folks can hang out with you when you're not on here? Well, thanks for having me. I, I am the opulent Amish on Twitter, and then starting this week, Fubar is back, and um, yeah, so we'll see you there, Rick. But yeah, we're back on the air this week. Hey, I nice to know. <laughs> <laughs> she tweeted me two hey, days your, ago. Producer, your producer knows now. I was in the tweet. She tweeted you two days ago. Uh, I must have missed it. I don't yeah, remember seeing it. But anyway, you did. It's, it's not a huge deal. <laughs> All right. So, anyway. Hey, welcome 
to train wreck radio. <laughs> Everything I touch dies in a fire. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Madfeist, which is spelled M A D F I E S T. Yes, I know it's spelled wrong. I couldn't get the right spelling. I get that all the time. You spelled Feist wrong. I didn't no, even I, notice. I didn't yeah, even well, know what he was talking people, about until he told me it was spelled wrong. So I'm like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, most people don't even know what a Feist is, but those that do give me crap. Um, and you can find me on Facebook. I'm just, you know, Dan Wright on Facebook. And of course, you can follow along with me at Radio Host Rick or shoot me a link over on Facebook or you can shoot me an email, rick at klrnradio.com. We are out. Coming up next, Freaky Friday with Social Claude. See you guys next week. Hey.